Craig on here with MaritimeGardening.com and a uh, very windy day today so I decided to go for a walk in the woods and see what kind of uh, damage the storm just did and also to forge for some more materials to use in my garden for next year. And I thought today would be a useful day to get out and look for uh, handles for my uh, shovel and things like that. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of people think a shovel is a cheap thing and if your shovel breaks you should just go buy a new one. Uh, I think that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, the actual metal part of the shovel lasts a long time and uh, it's, it's relatively easy to replace a handle on a shovel and in fact one of my shovels needs a handle replacement anyway. So uh, I'm going to go and uh, have a look around here today and show you how I go about replacing my uh, rake and shovel handles and things like that. Around this time of year, uh, you know, not every year, but certainly this year I'm going to do this. I'll go and get about three good long uh, pieces of wood that I could use for something like that. Um, and then I've got them on hand in the summer. If something happens, the uh, handle's ready to go. Because when you want to have a handle ready for being uh, for a shovel or something like that, you want it to dry out, you want it to cure, you want it to age, you want to treat it, and you want to have it, you know, when, you're, when your shovel breaks and you need a shovel, you want to have a new handle ready to go. You want to be able to replace that handle in about five minutes and get back to business. You don't want to have to drive into town and get another handle and put it on or drive in town and buy another shovel or whatever. You just want to take the old handle off, put a new one on and get back to what you were doing. And that should only take about five minutes if you're doing your preparation this time of year when there's not a lot going on in your garden. My garden's frozen solid right now. So, come along with me. Let's have a little walk around the woods. This is just the woods behind my house. And uh, I'll find a couple ideal trees for that sort of thing. And I think you might be surprised at how easy this is. It's really not that compli complicated. Alright, so stay with me. Hey, so I gotta work quick here because my, for whatever reason, it must be the cold, my battery is just about dead even though I just charged it. So I found an ideal grove of trees here. I'm gonna use uh, spruce, which <clears throat> might seem crazy to a lot of people. Uh, what are you doing using spruce for a, a shovel handle? You're supposed to use hickory or ash or whatever. Um, a, there's no hickory or ash in this forest, or if, if there is ash, there's no hickory for sure. If there is ash, it's pretty hard to come by. Um, number two, there's a lot of spruce. Number three, I can use spruce and it really doesn't have any impact on the forest. I got a couple spruce trees here that are growing next to really big spruce trees, much thicker in diameter, and they're just not gonna outcompete them for sunlight and resource and stuff like that. These trees are, you can't see the tops of them, but they're, they're stunted, they're gonna die. So their days are numbered anyway. They're never gonna achieve their full potential as trees, but they can achieve their full potential as shovel and rake handles. So, and they're nice and straight. Uh, spruce growing in the forest, they tend to grow perfectly straight. They're not as strong as ash or uh, hickory, but as long as you don't treat your shovel like a pry bar, and you shouldn't treat your shovel like a pry bar, uh, they'll work perfectly fine as shovel handles. I know because I've done it before. I've broken hickory handles, I've broken ash handles, and I've broken spruce handles. I always broke sho break shovels handles when I'm not being careful. So as long as you're careful, your spruce shovel will, uh, handle will last, last you years. So why not just use that because you can just take a little stroll in the woods if you live in an area that's wooded and uh, use that. And wherever you are, I'm sure there's, uh, if you've got access to a forest like this where you can t take a little bit of resources from the forest, um, I'm sure there's something that's easy to come by that's not the perfect ideal thing but works pretty good anyway. That's all I'm going to do here. So with this axe, I'll make sure work of these trees here. Not doing an axe uh, safety uh, video here, so uh, watch one of those by someone else. Always good to cut low anyway. If your axe is good and sharp. It won't be hard to use it. I'm going to take this tree and this one and uh, another one from a different location. There's a bend right here, so I'm going to take a turn over here. I'll just process the tree. This is just a $12 axe, nothing fancy. I think there's way too much talk on the internet about 
this fancy expensive axe or that fancy expensive axe. If you don't invest something, invest your time into learning how to use an axe. And uh, I think you'll find that a much better investment than spending a lot of money on an axe and you don't know how to use one. Learn how to sharpen an axe. Learn how to use an axe. And you'll make short work of whatever you're whatever wood you're trying to process. I like shovel handles to be about as tall as my head. Minimum. I like them a lot longer than they come. Uh, that's another reason to make your own handles for things. I find rake handles and shovel handles. I'm six foot four. I find everything is usually too short for me. They're just not, doesn't feel right. Um, so I don't know why they make everything so, so short handled, but uh, when I'm doing it myself, I can make it just the way I want. So that's what I do. So these, uh, there's one over there I'm gonna grab as well. But uh, these trees, you wanna take the bark off. It doesn't come off that easily when it's cold like this. So if you wanna make the work easy on yourself, uh, you know, bring them inside, get them warm, throw them in a drift of snow for the winter and do it later. Pick a day in March to skin them. See how it's just not coming off? If it was March right now, this bark would fly right off no problem. And even if I use a, a, good, a good knife, this is a very sharp uh, uh, Solingen knife, and this knife can normally, the bark will just fly off a tree. But when it's cold like this, the bark just doesn't come off as easily. If it was uh, March or April, this bark would come off no problem. Because the tree's not frozen solid, right? And all the saps and stuff are flowing beneath the bark. So there's really no point in uh, going too crazy trying to bark the trees this time of year. I would, I would scuff them up a little bit. And just leave them outside for the winter. Clean them up as best as you can. But leave them outside for the winter. And uh, take the bark off. Uh, in March or April when uh, it's a bit warmer and a bit wetter. But well, this is a good time to grab them. Anyway, that's the general idea. I find the branches, if you hold the tree upside down, the branches tend to come off a lot easier when you're using a knife or an axe or whatever. And you hold the tree upside down, the, the little branches tend to just come off easier. I don't know why they come off that way, but they do. And diameter-wise, never put your knife on the ground, you'll never see it again. Diameter-wise, um, you want the handle all the way along it to be so you you know a good two inch diameter that might seem a, lot, a, a bit big but uh, once you plane this down once you've taken the bark off and you've planed it down and you've gotten it the way you want it it's going to lose a good quarter inch or more of uh, you know diameter so you got to actually take pieces that are a bit bigger and heavier than you think is necessary because you want the the handle to be properly uh, planed and tapered and that sort of stuff. And I'll do videos on that later on in the year. Uh, once these have dried out a bit. Right now these aren't dry yet. These are green. Um, another great trick you can do is to find uh, dead standing trees that are just dead. Um, you have to look a lot longer and I didn't have enough battery to, to do that today. But these will be fine. I'll put these somewhere that they'll dry out. This time of year, even in my climate where it's normally quite uh, damp uh, in the winter because everything's frozen, it's uh, far less humid and things dry out pretty quickly. So as long as you scuff up the bark a bit so that uh, the tree can dry out a bit, uh, you know, because the bark acts like a wrapper, right? Uh, different kinds of barks are more uh, effective as wrappers than others, but generally speaking, you get some of that bark off and then just put it somewhere where it's going to be exposed to the sun and the wind and uh, a couple months from now, 
take the bark off and start turning it into something that looks like a handle. All right, so uh, just a quick video on uh, one more thing you can do in the winter when your garden's frozen. Other resources that you can gather from the forest in a way that has a minimal impact. These trees were not going to amount to anything anyway. Um, I wish I had more more time or more, more battery on my camera to show you, but just by the way they were growing, they were never going to grow to their full size given the location they were growing at and the other trees they were competing with. Um, what's more, if you look down this grove, there's a lot of uh, porcupine activity. Porcupine will eat the bark around the bottom of a tree and just kill it. Um, I don't know why they do that. They don't do it to every tree. They, I don't know how they choose which trees they take, but a porcupine will eat a ring a lot of times. And sometimes they'll eat all the bark off a tree, and that's what they eat this time of year in the winter. They don't eat bark in the summer. Um, but sometimes they'll just eat like a ring around the tree about that high, just all the way around. It kills the whole tree, and then they just leave the tree alone. I don't know why they do that. Um, incidentally, trees that have been had that done to them by porcupine make excellent uh, firewood because they're nice and dry usually. They're what they call dead standing. Uh, anyway, getting off topic. I hope that was helpful. hope you gave you some ideas of one more thing to do in the winter. I hope my battery's still on. And uh, until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in the woods. Thanks for watching.